So very welcome back to the second round of the 1949 Grand Prix season. It is the Grand Prix de Pau at the Circuit de Pau Ville in the south of France. And a reminder again to check out the website for the latest news and results there. Without further ado, here is the grid for the Grand Prix de Pau. And Ferrari at it again. This time, Alberto Ascari is on pole. And Luigi Villaresi is alongside him in second position. Second row, Juan Manuel Fangio qualifying well in the Maserati. Raymond Sommer alongside him. The third Ferrari out of the top four. And some interesting sights on row three of the grid. Louis Chirot expectedly is in fifth, but Harry Shell finds himself in sixth, the wildcard driver for Talbot Lago from the United States of America. Then in seventh, we have Philippe Etancello and Louis Rossier also for Talbot Lago. Giuseppe Farina, his woes continue in ninth, uh, a long way down on his teammates, but the second highest Maserati. Benedicto Campos is in 10th, then it's Reg Parnell and Peter Whitehead and Ferdinando Righetti for Ferrari. Then it's Prince Bira, then we have two lot of Raffin Rees, Robin Manzon with a good performance in the wildcard Sibrid Ordini, followed then by Pierre Leve and Luigi Fagioli also making a wildcard appearance for Talbot Lario. Row 10, Molly Chantignol is back. And he's alongside Yves Girard Cabin too. They're then followed by Eugene Chabu, Nelo Pagani, Guimarães, and Georges Grignard. Final row of the grid, Giovanni Bracco and Cuff Harrison, a surprise qualifier at the expense of the Belgian Johnny Clays, as well as Bob Gerard, who did not make the cut. So we're just about ready to get underway here. Alberto Ascari on pole. He'll be hoping he doesn't go backwards in similar fashion. In similar fashion as he did in the San Remo Grand Prix. The engines rev. They get off the grid. They're underway. And it looks like it's a good start by Alberto Ascari. Who leads Villaresi comfortably off the line. Juan Manuel Fangio holding on to third. Some are similarly in fourth, so they're all in the same order as they started in the top five. Ascari leading into turn one here at the second de Poville. And already looking like a rather healthy advantage for Alberto Ascari. leading away around these narrow city streets. See the difficulty of the acceleration out of these slow corners. Scary making the most of them on lap one. So further down the other shell remaining in sixth, he's followed by Etan Sella, then it's Benedicto Campos, Peter Whitehead and Louis Rossier. Rossier has really had a bit of a clanger of a start. Dropped a few positions there down to tenth. Again, that was the issue last time out at San Remo. Villaresi is closing in ever so subtly on Alberto Ascari. Is the runaway victor. That's the San Remo Grand Prix. He's looking for an opening now. He's taking to the outside of Alberto Ascari. And Villaresi. Is he asserting himself as an early hot favourite? 
take this one. Ascari, seeing a bit of a queue develop behind him. Juan Manuel Fangio is also in, in waiting. And very visible are Raymond Sommer and Louis Chiron. So things getting rather interesting here, Scardi struggling for pace, there are four cars stacked, ready and waiting behind him, and very very eager to pounce, and it's a similar story in the early stages in terms of Ascari's race pace, it's leaving quite a bit to be desired, and it's not him coming under pressure, but rather Luigi Villaresi, as Juan Manuel Fangio has a little cheeky glance up the inside into the first corner fails to materialize but it's showing just how much Ascari is backing them all up at the moment Little race he looks for any sort of way past again to go on board with the Italian all the way to the back of the line with Raymond Sommer as they pass through these picturesque streets Ascari in the lead but there's only so much longer that he can bank upon the narrow nature of this circuit and uh, Proves to make overtaking very difficult indeed. Even that is not going to be a saving grace if he's holding up such a pack of drivers in this fashion. Snaking round onto the final stretch. A rather wretched sight in his mirrors. With that conga line of vehicles. But still he holds firm. Fangio looking impatient again into those first couple of corners. That could cost him dearly. As Raymond Sommer tries to pull alongside him. And Sommer is then in turn put under pressure by Louis Chiron. And the very, very wild, wily Monagash driver. Seems to have done it again. Jack manoeuvres the Frenchman. Some experienced racecraft from a man who knows how to get results in the Talbot Lago. Just as Sala was looking on. To take third position. Now he finds himself shuffled back down to fifth in the Ferrari. Prancing horse currently running first, second and fifth in this Grand Prix. A little bit further down the order again. Harry Shell holding on to sixth. But he's, uh, he's keeping quite... a hefty figure behind him in the shape of Philippe Dancel who's evidently going quite a bit faster than him but is also struggling to get by around this circuit I think he has done it now we see it there start finish line going into turn one Philippe Dancel into sixth and he'll have some ambition of bridging the gap up to the top five but look at that Fangio Juan Manuel Fangio of Argentina going up the inside of Luigi Villarese. And for all of the huffing and puffing from Villarese, he has been caught short there by the Argentinian. He's really making the Maserati 
work to his benefit. He was quietly ambitious going into this weekend after the, some of the woes last time out ran out of fuel on the final lap. Ended up classified 7th but would have been on for a high position. Villaracy dived arms up the inside. He's caused quite the blockage there. He seemed to rebound off the wall as well. Made Fangio stop in his tracks. Ascari has suddenly got a big advantage. It was a misplaced overtaking manoeuvre from Luigi Villaracy. Uh, saw him with quite a hefty collision off the outside barrier. He's into second though. And a rather bizarre manoeuvre. Somehow sees him gain a place, but uh, didn't look like the best manoeuvre in the interest of sportsmanship, it has to be said. He overcooked that one somehow. He's come out unscathed and with an extra position to his name up into second. Has uh, changed the complexion of things. That line that was emerging at the front of the race has very much been disrupted now. Scarly has some breathing room, some breathing space, and uh, maybe this is exactly what he needs just to get his eye in. And have the pressure lifted temporarily. That may allow him to craft for himself a more desirable race pace. He seems to have just lapped Yves Girard Cabin too, who had to make an early pit stop for damage repairs. And look at this, this is sure. Fighting with Summer again. Nothing to come out of that one. It unsettled on closing in the background, uh, profiting from some of the pandemonium at the front. Prince Bira, he was in 10th for now, he's out of the race, he was running quite well. That's a mechanical failure for the tie driver. That's Louis Lossier into the top 10. Giuseppe Farina all the way down in 11th, running along with the wild card Luigi Fagioli. That's going to be considered a bit of a failure for him. He's struggling to get to drips with the Maserati again. Sixth place last time out, overtaken. And late in the race by uh, Raymond Sommer. And then became a top five finish courtesy of Fangio running out of fuel. In the race seat, fastest lap of the race. And zeroing back in. Oh, and Alberto Ascari. Shiro. Shiro in trouble. Fire coming out of the back of the Talbot Largo. Nothing he could really do about that. Pulls to the side of the road. That's a horrible end to the race for him. He was going along very well in fourth. The highest place, Talbot Largo. His race is run. He'll be hoping he doesn't have too many of those to come. It's disappointment for the French manufacturer in front of a home crowd as well. Highest runner now, Harry Shell, who somehow snuck back past... Did he bet our cellar while our eyes were fixated on the burning engine of the Talbot Lago Chiron and Ascari is out. I'm not sure what's happened to Ascari, but he's out of the race now. 
and it's the same problem, the same affliction. Alberto Ascani, he was leading the Grand Prix de Po, and suddenly his Ferrari is burned up. A calamitous failure. An absolute hammer blow to his ambitions. And it just happened so suddenly. And that has very much changed the race. And who profits? That's right, it's this man, Villaresi, at the front. And looking poised to ride off into the sunset once more, unless Juan Manuel Fangio has something to say about it. The fastest lap of the race, it's very befitting. Fernando Rietti out as well. It's running outside the top 10 at the time, but two failures for Ferrari on the same lap, and that is going to cause a lot of concern for them. And concern, the man who's leading the race. And this uh, team have been afflicted by such poor reliability in the early stages of this race. Philippe Etancello is back past Harry Shell. I think we have to expect that. Shell rather out of practice when it comes to Grand Prix racing. We haven't seen him since 1947. And off goes Villa Villaracy's had a terrible accident. We've seen him overcook it before. But he's done it in an even more dramatic fashion this time around. Smashing into the outside wall, locking up his brakes again. You've got to wonder whether that was driver error or a failure. I think it could well be driver error. Given the way we've seen him drive around this circuit, he's been taking risks. And that was a bridge too far. And he's paid for it in the ultimate form. Luigi Villaresi is out. And terrible scenes for Ferrari. They've lost three cars in very, very quick succession. And all of a sudden, the Argentinian in the Maserati, Juan Manuel Fangio, finds himself in the lead of the Grand Prix de Po. Unbelievable turn of events here. Chiron out. Then Ascali with the engine failure. And then Luigi Villalesi with a pretty horrible looking accident. We'll hope he's okay after that. It was a terrible dull thud as he crashed into the barriers and came to a stop. I think he's just misjudged that and got it all wrong. And Villalesi Convincing winner last time out by a rather massive landslide. It looked like he was uh, predestined to do the same thing again here. But it's not to be. Remarkably so. It's crashed out. So three of the top five from the last Grand Prix. Including the first and second places from that race, they are out. And Juan Manuel Fangio now picks up where they've left off. And Raymond Sommer finds himself in the lofty heights of second position. Philippe Etan Senna is running very well again. Third place last time out, if you'll remember. And who's that coming to a stop? It's Pierre Levay in the ta Talbot Largo, one of the more lowly Talbot Largos. But he is also out. 
another mechanical failure to add to the list. Peter Whitehead out, another Ferrari gone. So four out of six Ferraris are out. It's going to worry Raymond Sarah, surely. Still in the race though, is Giovanni Brazzo. Uh, very much opposite fortunes with Bracho rounding out the rear and Lehmann Sommer lapping him as he runs in second position the gap between Fangio and Sommer pretty stable, pretty stagnant hovering around the 5 second mark Likewise, back to Etan Sella in third. So we're in a bit of a period of calm after the first 10 laps that saw a great deal of excitement and incident. Here's a man we haven't really talked about as well. This is Benedicto Campos, also of Argentina. Teammates and compatriot of Juan Manuel Fangio. And he is on for a potential first top five finish. He will be very much enamored with the idea of that. Gets past Yves Girard Callum too nicely. And I think you can just about see Harry Shell in the distance. I think he has a reasonable shot of uh, catching him. Rossier and Farina now. This is some hand to hand combat. Farina up the inside, pulled alongside him. Didn't quite have the gumption to pull that one off into the fast right-hander. You could see the Maserati really squirrelling there. Squirmed as he entered the corner. You can't really blame him for lifting in those circumstances. Raymond Sommer, a little bit closer to Fangio, perhaps only, uh, owing that to Guimaraes holding up the Argentinian. And as Sommer gets past him himself, we'll see how that's changed. Goes back up to 4.6, so Mares pretty much equally held both of them up. Philippe Tancelin in third position. And again, he's running a very nice little race here. Could be on for another Rostrum finish. Second one in succession. He's the only man on the circuit who's still eligible for that berth of two in a row. Considering the retirements of uh, Villaresi and uh, uh, Louis Chiron. Rossier and Ferrina are still at loggerheads in the fight for sixth position. Sommer, he's fighting very well here. A lot of 
expected him to let the gap slacken a bit more than it has, but he's keeping Juan Manuel Fangio very honest here. And maybe, just maybe, Salah can find some late race pace to put him under some real pressure, but just as I say that, Juan Manuel Fangio said the fastest lap of the race and extending the gap by a very significant second and a half on that lap. So perhaps, finally, some of spirit is starting to break. Etan Senna, it's a pretty lonely and lonely race for him. Giuseppe Farina pits in, it's the first pit stop. Scheduled pit stop of the day. And probably a pretty wise move as well, considering that he was getting a little bit stuck behind Louis Rossier. And, well, well, what's happened here? Raymond Sommer is right on the back of Juan Manuel Fangio. What on earth has caused that? Fangio is slowing. I think he's slowing. Raymond Sommer goes up the inside. He's taking the lead. And Fangio is in serious difficulty. Fangio could be going to a stop here. He's running very slowly indeed. I'm not sure of its damage. He's ducking into the pits. Right at this moment. I'm going to have to see if they can uh, amend this issue. And I think he is coming in for a stop, so... I'm going to try and fix the problem at least. But that's cost him a great deal of time. But at least he is still in the running in this Grand Prix. He's coming out of the pits now. Still in the race. I'm grateful for that. So whatever issue he's had there, whether it's damage or a minor mechanical problem, they've managed to uh, fix it and send him back on his way. But that has really changed things now. It's given Summer a reasonable advantage. about five or so seconds he may uh, pit soon to try and cover Fangio immediately and ensure that Fangio doesn't uh, work his way up virtually ahead of him again before he has the opportunity to pit in because Fangio does have the slightly more swift pace at the moment than Raymond Sommer. I think if he wants to have a chance, he'll have to defend against Fangio on the, these narrow streets. Because it is very, very difficult to overtake around here. Fangio will struggle, like everyone has, to make that uh, track position manoeuvre. Harry Shell comes in, but Summer, unfortunately, he's staying out, and that may be a little bit of naivety on the part of Ferrari. Bossier in as well from fifth. Interesting to see where he'll come out uh, relative to Campos and. Uh, Giuseppe Farina, Harry Shell's coming straight back out in fourth, that's no surprise. Keep an eye on Campos and uh, Farina. With Rossier, we expect Campos to get by him. And he's well ahead of Farina, I think. And uh, this round of pit stops have not at all worked in the favour of uh, Giuseppe Farina, who's a long way further back from Louis Rossier than it was before. It's right on his gearbox. Before the round of pit stops and now he's lost about four or five seconds. 
So, another pretty bitter blow to Giuseppe Fellina's ambitions. Benedicto Campos could also uh, fall victim to Rossier here. He must have had a very fearsome turn of pace in the laps before he took his pit stop. And look at Rossier there. And that was a very authoritative move. <coughs> but just as we say that, Benedicto Campos has run into difficulty here. There's smoke pluming from the back. It was Maserati. And that is going to be so disappointing. He was running in the top five. He was on. For a really, really delightful result. Has been cruelly stripped away from him by this mechanical failure. Romina goes up the inside as he finally pulls to the side of the road, realizes there is something wrong with his car. And Benedicto Campos of Argentina, he's out of the race as well. Louis Rossier now assumes a top five position. And Giuseppe Farina finds himself in the all too familiar for him position of sixth. Raymond Sommer is in, so let's watch now. Fangio has been making pretty significant inroads since his uh, sole pit stop of the day. Sommer is coming out and Fangio is flying through back into the lead. And again, they should have brought Sommer in earlier. They should have covered Fangio while they still could. And I think anyone in Raymond Sommer's position could have fancied themselves a little bit more in uh, some wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing action, given how difficult it is to overtake here. But alas... Ferrari or oh, Summer fancied their chances on raw pace alone and then has not been enough to cut it. Coming to the outside of Robert Mansell. He's running a very good race in that Simca Gordini. It's a pretty underpowered vehicle. It's the one that Juan Manuel Fangio really made his name in last year. Dragging it to some disproportionately high performances. Landed him a spot in the Maserati squadron. <coughs> All now part of the history of a driver who is uh, making himself out to be a very, very exciting figure in the sport indeed. It's the second race of Maserati. Showed a lot of fighting spirits. Last time out, only to run out of fuel. And now he's in prime position to take the spoils here at Poe. Three point six seconds up on Raymond Sommer in the Ferrari. Vitan Sello, fifteen seconds back in third. Very, very consistent race from him. I think the fight for fourth could get very tasty with Rossier there. You and Giuseppe Ferlina, they're running quicker than Harry Shell. He's uh, been very consistent today, a bit lacking in raw pace, but uh, the good starts he made, the gap he uh, compounded over everyone else. Serving him well, but uh, 
Rossier just looks a little bit too hot on his tail for him to be able to resist in full. Time will tell. Again, we know how difficult it is to overtake here. Plenty to cheer about for the home faithful still, I think. We've got Raymond Sommer, one of their own, in second. Then uh, Talbot Lagos all the way from third down to fifth. We have two French drivers piloting those three vehicles. And being an American, of course, Harry Shell. It's quite surreal seeing him up there. He was a real backmarker in 47 with the um, Cisitalia squad, I think it was. I think uh, he was alongside uh, Giovanni Braccio. He was a uh, running towards the back in an older Ferrari today. So I'm not sure many would have expected him to be in this position. Fourth place. Such is the... Uh, such are the wonders of having an improved vehicle underneath you. Rossier is clothing. And uh, remains to be seen how easily we'll be able to make a pass lap by lap. He's uh, closing things down though. Steppi Farina also gaining relative to Shell. feeling the pressure to bring home a top five today. Again, you've got to say about Reg Parnell as well. Got to mention him. Hugely consistent once again in seventh. That's a really solid drive from the British driver. And Luigi Faccioli as well, eighth position. Wild card in a very unfamiliar uh, Talbot Largo. And a couple of good outings for Maserati last season, but struggling to find that same sort of magic he has in the past. Rossier now able to make a bit of a run at Harry Shell, but it's not to be there. He'll look to the outside. Again, not gonna happen. Such is the pitfall around the circuit de Poville. It's not so easy. To make that definitive overtaking manoeuvre, you've really got to put quite a lot on the line. We've seen that go wrong before today. Etan Senna retires. What's happened to him? Shall we see? Is it going to be a mechanical failure? Or has he made a misjudgment? Mechanical failure it is. Oh dear. So that changes things once again. The Tancelo falling out of the race. And somehow, Harry Shell finds himself promoted 
into a rostrum position and his fight with Louis Rossier becomes one for third position. Farina now into the top five as well. Two lot of Drafen readers out, he was running in ninth. Promotes Maurice Chantignon up to ninth. Will even be up to eighth once they all pass uh, Etan Celan. And his car's resting place. And Farina, oh no. <coughs> Farina as well. Smoke plume and you're at the back of the Maserati. And he can simply will not believe it. Finally, in that sort of promised position in the top five, the car instantly gives up on him. And who else but Reg Parnell to inherit fifth position? And now this could be it for Rossier. This could be it for him up the inside. Doesn't lock things up. Straight in there, a very clean maneuver on Harry Shell. And Louis Rossier now third. And likely he'll carry that all the way to the end. <coughs> so, how about that? Farina out, Etan Selon out. And Tuno de Graffenried also out. Finally, Farina comes to a stop. Rich Barnell will overtake him and take a top five yet again. Nearly a story from last season. Others retiring and Reg Parnell there to pick up the pieces and steal a top five. And he's done it again. You do have to be in it to win it. Luigi Fagioli will be promoted to sixth. Trantignor to the lofty heights of seventh. And the Simcadorini. That would be of quite some delight to him. Remember Trantignor. Remarkably has tasted the points finished before. It was the... In the Grand Prix de Chimay in Belgium in 1947. Where there was a real mass. A glut of retirements. He somehow found himself in the... Uh, I think it was a Delage vehicle. And he himself in fourth. He found himself in fourth, rather. It really was a turn up for the books. Bossy and Shell comfortably running in tow. So disappointing to see Eton Sun out of the race in that sort of fashion. was looking very good once again <laughs> so it'll be very interesting to take a look at the driver the unofficial driver standing after this one and Raymond Sommer is the only man in the top five to have scored in the first race remember and he came fifth there. So fifth in a second, six plus two, that'll be eight. We'll put him joint top with this man, Juan Manuel, uh, Juan Manuel Fangio, as well as Luigi uh, Villaresi. So that is quite the uh, quite the occurrence for Raymond Sommer. Shows really the reward of consistency. Above all else, thirteen seconds now between Fangio and Summer. Just four laps left for the Argentinian to complete. On his way to glory.
think of the problems that Fangio's had to overcome in this race as well. Yeah. Temporary faults causing him to slow down. Lost about five or ten seconds. He really turned things around from there. He's proven himself to definitively be the quickest man around this circuit today. Coming up to Guimaraes again. Already has been a bit of a race of attrition, sort of the converse of last time out where we see yeah, we saw pretty much nobody in that top five be afflicted by any uh, mishap or misfortune, other than Fangio of course running out of fuel. Everyone else is very much solidified while well, all the back markers sort of fell away. And it's been uh, the inverse of that today. All the big names plagued by issues. Fangio. Well, he'll take it up with delight, I'm sure. Three laps left to complete for the Argentinian. Harry Shell, oh no. Harry Shell is out and Fangio is pitting in. Fangio is pitting in. And if they fail to rectify that issue from before, I'm not sure. I don't know what is quite happening there. But Fangio forced back into the pits. And that is handed Raymond Sommer the victory. Fangio forced to take a second pit stop. Is it a fuel issue again? I'm, I do wonder. They're not giving enough fuel again to go to the end of the race with that early pit stop. That might well be the case, but what a horrible way for him to lose. They'll still have second at the end of the day, but... Uh, that's a real shame, and Rossier, the same thing happening to him. Forced into making another stop. Guimaraes out of the race there. And I think uh, Rossier's pit stop will be consequence free. Because Reg Parnell is uh, so significantly behind at the moment. And it looks like fuel issues here. At the circuit to Beauville again. And Fatioli is out. He just inherited the fifth place that uh, Harry Shell had vacated. And uh, look who's up into fifth now. It's Maurice Chantignon. And well, the utter delirium for Simca Gordini and Maurice Chantignon. He looks like he's on for another top five, and Summer is in as well. Summer is in, Fangio will retake the lead. It looks like everyone has had to pit in for some extra fuel to make it to the end. And what a strange, strange end did we see it. So there's very much been a reset of affairs here. It's really the fairest outcome of all, you'd have to say. Fangio is going to take his win. Trantignon is out of the race as well. So there's chaos on the rows. But Gianni will inherit that fifth from Trantignon. Fangio will take the lead, uh, take the win. Summer second, Rossier third as it was before. 
it feels like the best outcome possible. Brian Shane for trotting on the last lap as well to incur a failure. But Juan Manuel Fangio is going to get his win. He'll cross the line and he'll win the Pogue Grand Prix. A well deserved victory amidst the turmoil of the last couple of laps there. It was by no means a easy ride there. It wasn't plain sailing in the slightest. And nobody seems to want fourth place though. Is uh, Nela Pagani has also come to a halt. Raymond Sommers in second. And Eugene Shabu is going to inherit fifth there. After it's passed through seemingly infinite number of hands. And then Rossier around the final corner. And he's going to come home and take the final spot on the podium in third. Frenchman, the former French manufacturer, and Reg Parnell will also soon cross the line for fourth. Just about managed to avoid being lapped by Fangio in the end. As he ride round Fangio on the victory lap. You'll probably see Reg Parnell in the distance. The last man to cross the line will be the man in fourth. British driver, another consistent performance. As those in front of him met very sticky ends, he will happily inherit. And he's coming into the pits beforehand as well. Crosses the line by entering pit lane. That's the end of the race here. And quite a bizarre one with uh, those frantic last few laps causing uh, a lot of chaos and a lot of discrepancies Juan Manuel Fangio the winner though the top three unchanged Fangio first, Sommer second Louis Rossier third then it's Reg Parnell in fourth and Eugene Chabu unexpectedly picking up a top five after it uh, worked its way through the hands of a very wide multitude of drivers. Georges Drignard in sixth. Molly Strantignard, heartbreak for him, who's set for a fifth place finish. The late retirement, same thing for Neil Pagani. Then we have in ninth, Flavio Manzor. We have Yves Girard Cabin to Giovanni uh, Braccio in eleventh, Kath Harris in twelfth, Harry Shell. Did retire a few laps from the end, but still counted three laps down. Same thing for Luigi Fagioli. Still classified in the end. Then we get to the out and out retirement. Guimarès, out of the race. Giuseppe Ferlina, engine failure. Whilst he was running in the top five. Gilbert Anselm was third when he dropped out of the race. Two of the graph and read out. Same thing for Benedetto Campos with a water leak. Peter Whitehead, he had a suspension failure. Pierre out. Luigi Villaresi, he retired from the race in the most dramatic of fashions, locking up and hitting the wall. A heavy, heavy accident that we don't see the likes of very often. Alberto Ascari, engine failure for him while his, he was leading as well. Luis Chiro also retired owing to an oil leak. Fernando Righetti, Fernando Righetti and uh, Prince Bira also out of the race. But they Rather bizarre and hectic Grand Prix. That's uh, the circuit de Beauville. Well, Manuel Fangio the victor. After a little bit of uncertainty there at the end, things corrected themselves and righted themselves for Juan Manuel Fangio. That concludes today's race. Hopefully, he'll come back and join us next time for. The very first instance of the British Grand Prix. So, we'll see you then, and goodbye.